Hello, welcome to README Driven Design in Emacs by Adam Ard. If you're a programmer, you're accustomed to putting a README file at the root of your project, and it's usually a markdown file. But if you use an org, mo more of an org mode file instead, you can take advantage of the great features that org mode provides, including literate programming, which lets you generate your source code and markdown documentation dynamically. I want to walk you through a little bit of what this looks like um, when you start a project especially if if it, you use something like github you begin with an automatically generated readme.md file so just delete that and instead create a readme.org file starting with an empty org file like you see here you can begin by recording important information about your project goals you can add diagrams code snippets to-do lists time tracking and much more I'm going to drop in some documentation that I that I have written about about my project here, so you can kind of see what this would look like. So as you can see, I have a title and a description, and then a subsection, as well as some code snippets. And you can see that Org Mode does a great job of formatting lists and code sections, and diagrams, and so forth. It's good or it's as good or better than Markdown, but when you use it in Emacs, you can do a lot more. For example, you can dynamically create diagrams using GraphViz from a text description. So if you go to this source block here and hit Control C, Control C, you'll see that we generate a, a diagram dynamically. You can run, so you can run these code snippets in place and get the results to show up inside of your your file which is a really powerful paradigm um, but most important most importantly for the purposes my purposes here um, org mode provides you the ability to do literate programming so take a quick look at this diagram that I generated here and it gives you a quick overview of, of what I mean by literate programming and how I'm using it you can see that we start with a readme.org file on top. At this point, we can do one of two things, tangle or weave. Tangle is used to describe the process of gen generating source code, while weave is the process of generating documentation. These are terms that Donald Knuth used, and he's the one that came up with the idea of literate programming in the early 1980s. But this is really all that there is to it. You just you are simply using literate a literate source file, in this case the readme.org, to generate the rest of the project or rest of the project files, basically. So let's dig in to the details of how this works. And I hope you hopefully you'll see how cool this is. So returning to the file here. Let's assume we have enough documentation now that we want to get started coding. So maybe we'll just start with like a Hello World app, just so we can make sure that our environment is set up correctly. So let's get started with a code block. So I created a little snippet to help me add a source block for literate programming quickly. And uh, there's not much to it. Uh, but there is some important annotations here. So there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's a there's a property called tangle, and that takes a value of a file name. And then there's also a uh, no web property called no export. And uh, basically, um, basically the no export We'll, we'll explain that a little bit more later. Um, and it has has to do with how the tangling is uh, done in the tangle step versus the weave step. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more. But the tangle field just simply tells, tells uh, Emacs where it needs to generate the uh, main.go file and where, where it needs to put it on the file system. Uh, you'll you'll notice that we we're going to use Go. Uh, that's just the language that I've been using the most lately. 
Uh, but the, this programming strategy is language agnostic. You could use any language or any mix of languages. You could create some files in Python, some files in Go, some files in in Lisp or whatever you want. Um, and so, but let's uh, let's create just a little hello world. Let's use another snippet here to generate the basics of a Go program. So I'm just going to print hello world. So that's, and then let's make it a section in our uh, file. So now you can see we've got this snippet. Um, when you have a source block in, inside of org mode, you can easily pop into a language specific buffer by typing control C single quote. So you can see now I have a, a go a, a buffer that's in go mode. And it gives you all the ability to edit like you would normally. If you hit control C single quote again then it goes back and any changes you make would will be updated there. But you can do quite a bit just inside of here too. There's quite a bit of language specific uh, functionality just in place and so you don't always have to go over to a separate buffer but it's a it's a nice option sometimes but now that you have the code in here you're gonna want to run it um, but right now it just lives here in this documentation so you need to get a copy of it into a separate file and that's the tangle process that you you need to follow there so I'm gonna drop in a little bit more doc a little bit more documentation really quick here. Uh, okay. All right. So just kind of as a kind of as a side note, I like to follow this process uh, whenever I have an op whenever I have an operation to perform. I I like to document it here with a snippet that can be executed in line then I don't have to leave org mode and I don't have to try to remember what I did later. So instead of just trying to do an operation, the first time I do something, I take the take the time to figure out what it is and document it. And so then it's recorded. And so here we find that to do a tangle operation, you run the command org babel tangle, which is a elist command. So if you hit control C, control C to run it in place, you get the result of main.go which basically is telling us that we've tangled one file called main.go and you can see that that's true if you go to the file system and you look so now in uh, in our demo directory we have a readme.org we have that PNG that we generated but we also have a main.go and if you if you visit that file you'll see that it's just the source code that was in our documentation which is exactly what we expected and what we wanted so that's good so if we return to to where we are at um, we, now we're we're at the point where we have a file on the file system so now we need um, now we need to build it and to run it so let's follow the same philosophy where let's document these operations that we're going to perform so I'm dropping in a a build instruction section and a run instruction section um, so as you can see here we have a little a bash source block and another bash source block this one compiles the go build command is what compiles a file and then the file that gets generated should be called demo and uh, so we would just run it here so if if I type control C control C we get an empty results block when you compile things no news is good news so it, it means there's no errors so presumably we've created an executable that's called demo so let's uh, Let's look again at the file system and regenerate. Um, yep, and what we have here is 
a demo executable, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's go back. So now we should be able to run it. So control C, control C, and we get hello world as a result, which was exactly what we were expecting. So that's already pretty cool that you can, that you can do that much. Um, but that's really just kind of the tip of the iceberg to, uh, to really kind of, um, use the more impressive features of literate programming. We need to, uh, we need to do a little bit more. Um, so, or at least, at least really to get the full benefit of it, then we need to do, um, add some sections that will cause uh, Emacs to have to to tangle or assemble this this file from different pieces. So imagine that we wanted to take this file and maybe kind of templatize it. So using literate programming syntax, this angled bracket syntax, let's say that we want to create an, an imports section. Oops in a functions section and then maybe just a main section and we'll get rid of this so now you see we've created something that looks a little bit like a like a template or a scaffolding or outline for what what our file is going to be it looks a little bit like pseudocode and uh, what we're going to have literate programming do is dynamically insert those things into those slots so the first thing we need to do is um, so let's create a section maybe called say hello so we want we want to add some functionality that makes our program say hello so using a different snippet that I have for creating something that I call like a literate section um, basically we create a another source block that's almost the same as the one for the file but it's it just has a few differences so say we want to drop code into the import section and we want it to be in Go. Here we use the same no web, no web, no export syntax, but then we've added this no web refs imports. And this ties that slot basically to this reference. It tells Emacs that when you tangle, we want to stick whatever's in here in that spot. So you skip the tangle file name section because you're not actually creating a file name you're you're putting information into a, an existing file so here we would just add the uh, FMT for the imports um, so let's add another section for uh, functions and let's create a let's just create a function called say hello that uh, doesn't have any arguments, no return types. All it does is kind of pretty much the same thing as we did before, just print something, but let's just say hello Emacs conf this time. Okay, so now we have a function, and now the function won't do anything unless we invoke it. So let's do one last literate section called main, make that a go source block and then let's just invoke that uh, that function so now you can see that we've got our scaffolding scaffolding or kind of outline and then we have the sections that we want to get tangled or inserted so I I've kind of used this syntax it's it's kind of borrowed from literate programming a little bit with a plus equals so really it's just saying that I want to append this item into the import section so it's really just to make it a little bit more clear what's going on uh, when you generate documentation you won't see these uh, these these particular property annotations and so you won't know immediately that this section goes in the imports area and so I usually put a little bit of documentation on top there so that it's easy to see and you would probably if this was very complicated you put some documentation above 
uh, to explain what you were doing, maybe right here. You could you could picture yourself maybe explaining a complicated algorithm or something up here and having a nice way to document it. So now that we've got that here in the documentation, we need to figure out, we need to make sure that it's going to tangle properly. So your best friend at this point is, is, uh, is a keyboard shortcut that lets you preview the tangled operations. So if you say control C, control V, control V, it will create a new buffer with the tangled contents. And so you can see here that the FMT import went to the right place, that function went to the right place, the function invocation went to the right place, and so we're feeling good. Uh, you can nest these things many layers deep, actually. So like if you came into the say hello function, you could add more sections, um, and, it, and it gets, and it'll go through and it'll keep track of all of that and tangle it for you. So you really get a lot of freedom and flexibility for how you want to document things by doing this. So now that we've previewed it and we feel good about it, we need to uh, we need to tangle so we get the file on the file system. So control C, control C, and you get just main.go comes back again. Control C, control C, and no errors come back and then if we did this right, when we when we run this, we should get hello Emacs comp. So control C, control C, hello Emacs comp. So I uh, I think that's pretty pretty cool actually. So we've got kind of the breadcrumbs of the process we've gone through to get to this point. This initial this initial document that has some tangling in it. We have documentation for how to tangle, how to build, how to run. It's We've really built a nice foundation for moving forward on our project and a nice way of breaking things out and documenting further. The last piece that we need to take care of is the weave that I that's I showed you in the diagram above. So one more time, we'll drop in some documentation. So this time on how to weave. So it's really just an export function. It's not, there's not a separate weave command going on here. We're just going to export what we've got here into a markdown format. So we're using org gfm export to markdown, which is the GitHub style markdown. You can use the other, just more standard type as well. So hit control C, control C. Now you see we've got a readme file and if you look in the file system we've got that right there and so if you go to something like ghostwriter and open that file now you can see that it's generated some documentation it puts a index at top at the top i usually just I usually turn that off. It's easy to do that by putting a property at the top of your your org file, but some people like to have an index. But here you can see that it's generated pretty nicely and formatted snippets well. Put the diagram in there, and then it's preserved. It's preserved this literate programming syntax, which is important because that's how we want to view the documentation. That's what the no exports. Um, property was was trying to maintain so that no exports means when you export do not try to tangle so that's hopefully that makes more sense now but now you can see all the documentation and I think uh, it demonstrates a, a pretty useful feature that's inside of Emacs and and hopefully hopefully you'll have as much fun using that as I have so thanks.